Hi everybody, look at this as a location. Wait, can't you see it? I'm talking about this huge swamp with the sea to the east and an high mountain to the north which extends, well, further than the free cam mod allow us to see. But trust me, there's plenty of space here for our village. Since the first time I explored this swamp, I knew that one day I would have built a village here with all the professions and everything that we might need. Swamp Village is one of the secret Minecraft villages, like the jungle village we built some weeks ago. They don't generate naturally, but they exist in the game, inhabited by villagers with their own unique outfit. The village will be large and functional, built to measure for villagers and fail proof despite all the water. Well, as much as possible, we're talking about villages after all and they will always find a way to get stuck for eternity or die horribly. Anyway, the village must also be beautiful and integrated into the biome with dark tones and spooky details. I'm raising the water level because I want to have a wetlands biome with ponds and lakes of all sides, from a great shallow lake to one block sized puddles. All houses will be connected with paths and boardwalks and most of them will be small and single story so that the villagers can easily find beds and professions. The water is stagnant, it doesn't flow, so it's supposed to be always at the same level and this makes the wetlands a very flat biome but tall trees and houses will make the skyline more interesting. A witch saw me interfering with the ecosystem and show me all her disappointment in the form of a poison splash potion. Sorry hack. It's time to get back to my base and gather some resources, but I'm thinking. Now that the local witch has been defeated, maybe the swamp needs a new witch to fear. dirt, mud and even farmland, then I added some plants and the swamp looks more messy and alive right now, but it's still empty. The first house will be one of the smallest, a simple square inside the blocks I marked as a pot. I will try a different creative approach for this village. I designed a basic template and I want to elaborate it again and again with different colors and shapes. That's the challenge, I'm gonna use this basic template for every structure in the village, changing materials and colors to create many different villager houses from this tiny one to a big mansion where the most important villagers will live and trade. This is the outside, simple as that. On the internal side, let's just put a tough base, then a brick frame all around with two high windows. Close it with glass panes. You seem skeptical, trust me, it will be great. The first structure is a restaurant and nobody will sleep here. It's an open kitchen with a little canopy to protect the customers from the rain in a cozy and welcoming patio. The roof has a smooth curve made of slabs on the last layer. You can never go wrong with this design. I really love the roof made of andesite and cobblestone. Inside the restaurant, there's the smoker, well, a smoky smoker, and then a cauldron to act as a kitchen sink. Using those workstations means that the butcher and the leather worker will work inside the restaurant. Outside the restaurant, there are some tables for a candlelight dinner. Yes, a romantic dinner in the smelly marshes. Why not? All those warm babies have to come from somewhere. Ah, fireflies would have looked so good here. The sink should be filled with water like this. And here is a freshly baked cake. Now, we've a touch for the restaurant. Today's 
special cake. Let's keep this neighborhood busy. Above this pond, right in front of the restaurant, I want to build a stilt house. First thing first, we need to connect the two buildings with a boardwalk. Don't forget, our goal is to have villagers proof houses. Now, we can build a platform of the steel house that will be the workshop of the armor and the toolsmith. It will be higher than the restaurant but still a small one. As you can see, the walls have the same template that I designed for this village but with different materials, purple pillars inside and granite outside. Recently I started to appreciate the granite block. It might be heavy but you can totally make it work with the right palette. The roof is different from the previous house, but somehow similar. I want to build a village with a consistent and easily recognizable style, not a bunch of different houses scattered all around. On top of all the roofs of the village, I'm gonna put some iron bars to add the gothic vibe. I go back to my base through the nether portal to grab a couple of decorations and repair my shovel that was about to die. The golden sword goes here and outside. An armor stand with a bunch of mixed armor pieces. Let me give you a tour of the armor workshop with the workstations for the armor and the toolsmith. And the spider staircase that will probably drive the villagers crazy. Upstairs, there's the bedroom. And then the staircase continues to the top of the tower where you can enjoy the view. Hmm, this is not safe. The next building is the Fletcher Workshop. I guess it needs a lot of space with the archery range for customers and all this stuff, so his house is a bit larger. Internal walls are in warped wood. As you can see, all houses have dark tones on the outside and bright colors on the inside. It's like uh, the villagers know they live in a gloomy place, but they want to make their homes and gardens cheerful and vibrant in contrast. The house is single story despite the high ceilings, and one of the two roofs is shaped as a small tower. Please ignore the shulker box monster and follow me. This is the section of the village we have built so far. For now, the Fletcher Workshop looks a bit secluded, but soon it will be surrounded by other buildings. Let's place the target here. It works as an archery range, but also a signboard, so everybody can find the shop. The fletching table goes here. Ah, I hope Mojang turns into a functional block for players one day. Now let's try this. I only brought these eggs with me. Wow, a first try! I'm trapping him here forever like so. Let's pretend the Fletcher takes its feathers from this chicken, without killing him of course. Another target for customers. Then the Fletcher can use this tool to scrape off the flint from this block of gravel. So we can craft its awesome arrows, what do you think? The next room is the bedroom and both rooms have these high organic ceilings with hanging leaves and dripstone. This one has a chandelier too. I know, I'm not supposed to record my game playing during the minecart night, but look at the sunset! I love so much the colors and the vibe of this swamp while it's wrapped in darkness. There's still a lot of work to do, but it's time to find villagers to breed them and populate the village so I can continue to build while the population is growing. Huh, we have visitors. Uh, these are not the kind of tenants we want. Sorry guys, go find an outpost for rent. Luckily, there's a taiga village right above the sea, not too far from the swamp, so we can easily kidnap villagers by boat. Oops, no pal, don't blow up the potential progenitors of my swamp villagers. Come with me, kid, in this amazing mission to explore strange new biomes and boldly go where no taiga villager has gone before. Look at those shining pinnacles, that's where your descendants will live and thrive. What about you, you say? Um, sure, kid, you will be so happy too. And now with bedtime stories, now stay safe in your dirt room. Time to go to sleep. Good night. Let's find another guest. Buddy, let's hurry. Your friend is waiting for you. We can't just let these kids loose in the village because all the rest in the village 
must be of the swamp type. This is why I need to build a breeder outside the village in the center of the lake and near the portal. I don't need an automatic breeder, this is just a secure building with a bunch of beds, but I want it to be nice. So I'm building a manor similar to the village buildings, but with high towers and a warm palette in red and orange blocks. Can you believe? This is still the same basic template that I showed you at the start of the video. Marsha's train ride! Well, it's more a ghost train ride because I'm about to show you a girl in detail. The breeder looks nice, but there's a honestly cruel little feature. If a villager moves to a different biome, like this tiger villager in the swamp, he will never turn into a swamp villager. But two tiger villagers will breed, and some, not all, mind me, of their children will be swamp villagers. If one of the parents is a swamp villager, it's more easy to get a swamp baby, and if both the parents are, well, you can be totally sure. This means uh, that we should get rid of the tiger villagers, leaving room for the swamp ones. But I cannot repeatedly kill villagers for my reputation to drop down. So I will sneak in the house at night, breaking the beds of the unlucky ones. They will fall to their death in that lava block. I'm not proud of it, I know. Not proud. For now, let's go this hole so we can bring in the founders of the Swamp Dynasty. Spoiler, you are about to see something really messy. I was ready to welcome my villagers, but a baby zombie scared them and they ran. It was like he chose the perfect moment to make his appearance. I put them back in a boat. I quickly brought one of them to the breeder and when I get back for the second one... Oh no, it's my fault that I am so sorry, man. I could cure them, but the founders from the far taiga, the two respected elders are, well doomed to die in lava sooner or later, so I won't waste a precious cured villager like so. Instead, I flew back to the tiger and grabbed another friend. We're almost there, buddy, to boldly go, well, ah, whatever. Please disembark from the front door. Now go for the shiny lectern. Let's close the fence and that's done. Sorry guys, these lecterns are not for you, but these crunchy bread loaves are. Ooh, I see some green clothes! Yes! This is my first swamp villager ever! Ooh, welcome! You're really cute and I'm so happy that I won't have to kill you horribly. <sighs> The fisherman lives in another stilt house, of course. It's a small house, surrounded by water and connected to the land by a wooden boardwalk, with a nice canopy where to chill out or fish with the rod, maybe. Meanwhile, I have some bad news for you. Our first baby villager was a swamp one, but the parents had more children and two of them are tiger villagers. This means the elders and their tiger progeny have served their purpose and are ready to move on the next plane of existence from where they will watch over their descendants. You are the chosen one now, follow the steps of your elders, have our bread and fill this village with your children. While the villagers go on with their lives, let's go back to the village. This is the house of the mason and the weaponsmith, but we will focus mostly on the mason tools and works. The house is one block higher than the others and a small mound to break up the flatness of the swamp and it's surrounded by the mason's work. Different stones and walls ready to be sold or delivered. Let's pretend that I'm intentionally showing you the finished product for a change not that I forgot to record this building, so... On the other side of the village there's a house without more benches, just three beds for a family of villagers who might need a home. It looks like the owners are into the mushroom business with many different kinds of mushrooms scattered all around, from the overwood and from the nether, small and medium sized. I'm using mushroom blocks even for the roof as a peculiar texturing for the mango planks. The 
house is divided into two bedrooms and since I decided to use bright and unusual blocks for the internal walls, I chose melons in this one. Let me show you a small trick if you already know more. You can't put candles and leaves, but then how did I manage to do it everywhere in this village? Use a solid block, put the candles on it and you can leave them an hour later, it's the same. Now replace the solid block with leaves and there it is! Sadly, this doesn't work with lanterns. The next building is the shepherd's house, so I had a sheep waiting to be taken to its new home for all this time, but... I feel really sad. There's just one thing to do. Hey, don't give me that look, I'm just going my own way. I'm gonna fix this too. Today's special... mutton. Yes, that feels more accurate now. Let's focus on the shepherd's house and then we will worry about the new sheep. This house is one of my favorite with a basalt base and pink walls and granite and purple pillars with cherry wood details, all enclosed by darker blocks. A staircase leads to the first floor with a nice balcony and then a turret and I really love the roof in weathered copper and mossy bricks. During the night, the village is at its best because the darkness gives the swamp a fairy tale atmosphere. Follow me inside the shepherd house for the last details. As you can see, I found another sheep and brought it home. Let's craft a couple of banners. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to use the loom also with carpets to create colorful patterns? These are just basic patterns, but if you want to see some fancy banners with the flow and gaster new patterns, watch my previous video. This one goes here as if it had been woven in the loom with all these vertical stripes. I'm hanging the other one outside as a signboard. Professional banners are crafted here falls. In the house, there's also some storage, a bed disguised as a sofa and more wood on the first floor. From here, you can look up from the balcony. Ok, enough chatter, we have work to do. The next house is the sleeping place of two villagers who spend all their time outside, working in the fields. So I will build a tiny house with a front door that leads to the crops from the farm. And then a back door to a nice flower garden. The pattern of the walls is all the same with the two arches and the high windows on every side of the house. While the crops are growing, let's work on the flower garden. Some campfires and then the bee nest, the bees will wake up at dawn. The beekeeper works on this garden, but since we don't have a beekeeper profession in Minecraft, we have to improvise. A brewing stand, then the glass pane and a hopper to make it look like a golden liquid pouring down from the block of honey on the top. Yes, the cleric will act as a beekeeper and maybe craft sweet honey potions. If you enjoyed the video so far, why don't you like and subscribe? Keep watching to see this mansion. The villagers love this village and you will love it too. All the small houses are done, but every village needs a place where villagers can chill out during their lunch break, mingling around the bell. Right here, in the center, I'm gonna build their gathering place, a dead mango tree with some moss and buds. Inside the tree, I'm hanging the bell and I will also add a couple of benches. Villagers can sit down, but there's no need to deny them a welcoming place. The village is on the right track, aside from this shulker box monstrosity, of course. I really like to walk inside the dead tree, that's the bell. Now I need a bunch of custom trees to fill the empty spaces. Most of the custom trees in the swamp are bald cypresses, typical swamp trees with a very wide base of roots above the waterline. I'm using oak leaves because they fit perfectly with the environment and I like the dark color they have in this biome. Inside the root system I'm hiding jack-o'-lantern to provide more light and I'm adding glow lichen and lanterns hanging from some of the trees. I'm also creating different trees like some small custom oaks and a couple of big trees that might be maples. In the lake I also add some small versions of the bald cypresses 
tiny trees no more than six or seven blocks high. They might not be perfect, but are very cute. You, sir, look eager to leave the nest for a new adventure. Are you ready? Please, wait in line. It will be your turn soon. Sometimes, all you need for a change is a gentle push. Maybe more than one. And there you go. This is the outside world. You don't need me anymore. I'm this stuck. Seriously? Come on, it didn't last one split second. Ha, smooth. Let's follow him. Oh, he has a little mushroom on his back pocket. How nice. Oh man, he's taking forever. And he chose his job. We have our first resident fisherman. Yay, I'm so proud. The second villager is almost home. And he's stuck in the same place. Go, get alive! Oh, here they are, mingling right under the bed. He's so happy, he's spinning around. Do you like your gathering spot, guys? I want to add more lights all around the village, so most of us won't spawn too close. But I like the dark and my mysterious vibe. What can I do to make it safer but still awesome? That's when I remember the wheel of crisps. Luckily, we do have blue flames micro, and so I tried this solution, but ah, it looks like a camping stove. That's not what I had in mind. But if we try this, that's the kind of light that I was looking for. Now some light blue glass all around. Our blue fairies dancing around the flame. Let's do this all around the village, shall we? but I'm tired of sleeping in the rain while all the villagers have a home. Right here, in the center of the lake, I'm gonna build my mini base, my home far from home, and I know exactly what kind of house I want. First, let's prettify the nether portal. Did you really think that after building a fancy square portal I wouldn't decorate it? I'm going for an overgrown theme, the dark tones, adding a black sun frame on both sides. I usually don't like the dark green of the leaves, grass and vines in the swamp, but it's perfect for this kind of structures. Look at the... Oh, wait, the wandering trader ventured to the nether and now the sad, abandoned llama is totally ruining my presentation. What about the other side? Let's pretend we are starting now. Look at this portal. Ah, oh, there's still the llama. Do you mind? Thank you. Uh, Whatever, I lost my train of thought. That's the ominous vision of the portal. My house is the only structure built without following the common pattern. And yes, it's a witch hut. Do you remember? I killed the previous one. After all, I'm a witch who scares villagers, kidnap babies and grown-ups during the night, open a portal to a fearful dimension and so on. The hut is dark, high and scary, but very welcome into the honor and perfect for short stays. I won't live here. I have my perfect base 1,000 blocks from here, but I refuse to sleep in some villager's bed like a squatter. On the side of the house, there's a custom mangrove with fewer leaves than the micro version and more overgrown grass, moss and flowers. Welcome to my hut. Cozy and spooky, the perfect place to rest when I come to visit the swamp. Yes, the mob ads warn visitors to stay away, but you're my guest, so come on in. I wanted a magic cauldron, but it could attract villagers, and I'd rather live happily secluded. Inside, there's everything I need. 
magic course from um, crystal therapy, a library with all my spell books, some storage, the bed, the furnace if I need to cook some food or do evil experiments. There's a first floor with more storage, the crafting table, the ender chest and also a view of the tower. Now an important feature, if the villagers come looking for me from the front door with pitchforks, I can run away from this secret trapdoor. I will sneak out and run through the portal. Let's walk through the village on this unnecessary long route to reach the road that will lead to the mansion, the last structure intended for villagers. Needless to say, the mansion will follow the same pattern we chose at the very beginning. The base, the arches in spruce and mud bricks, a port stream, then brown concrete for the inner walls, and white glass panes for the windows. Let's build some more of this. As you may have noticed, we are missing librarians and cartographers because they are precious and should be protected. They will live inside this large mansion. I will need new cartographers to find the trial chambers. And if ever the experimental feature of villager training will become official, having a swamp librarian could be your only chance to have depth strider and mending. Mending! You see my point now? The ground floor is the working area. This is a place with culture, for the cartographers will study and store their maps, while the librarians will give lessons to the students from their lecterns. Yes, the entrance is a gate, so technically they are all trapped in here, but it's for their own safety, you know, a swamp is a dangerous place. The first floor is the sleeping area with many bedrooms that the villagers will probably struggle to find, but I will add beds on the ground floor too. There is also a couple of common areas with chairs, a sofa and a fireplace. The spiral staircase leads up to the walkable rooftop. Well, not walkable for villagers or they might jump or get lost. The chimneys are actually connected to the fireplaces of the mansion and the gothic iron bars are decorated with grey candles that looks like spikes. The mansion is surrounded by small trees, bushes, flowers and ponds and everything is inspired by a gorgeous gothic manor in a very nice place called Holly Village near London. I know I'm over detailing but I want this village to look alive and real and also villagers may have bad taste in exterior architecture. Yes, it's all their fault, don't blame me. Follow me inside the mansion, but please be quiet because the cartographer is still sleeping. I made a map of the village and I'm gonna place it on his table so he can study it. Let me show you the mansion interiors. There's the director's office, some benches for the students, the desk where cartographers draw their maps and then two classrooms where teachers hold lessons this one and that one over there. Let's head to the first floor. Look at the chandelier. This is a chilling area for teachers with a nice fireplace and a double bedroom. Well, these are two more tiny bedrooms that are not too comfortable but you know what professors are like. They only care about their studies. The staircase leads to the rooftop these gates prevent villagers from escaping from the roof, uh, so they can focus on their maps and books. And this is the rooftop, with some bushes, the chimneys and the spiky bars. Not too far from the mansion, I'm building an abandoned graveyard. I imagine that it was submerged in the marshes and that some headstones are now surrounded by water. Sadly, there's no witch out in this swamp too far, but there's another thing I need. I love blue orchids and they can be found only in swamps, so we'll also build a flower farm. The flower farm is a classic design from Shulker Craft. I built a lot of these farms in specific spots to get different flowers. Check out my video about farming dyes to know everything about it. For the building, 
I had to start with a square base and make it less boring by adding a porch and a boardwalk. I know you're sick of hearing me say that, but look, this is again the same basic pattern with the two arches and the tall windows. I had to cover the far and so it's just a big square, but I could be more creative with an L-shaped roof, adding a chimney and tower, which is just decorative, you can't really use it. And that's the flower farm. Look at the tower and all the details, but let's give it a go. Loud as usual and wow, how many flowers! It's been a long project and meanwhile I updated my world to the 1.21 version, so I will replace some details with the new tough and copper blocks. The new tough variants are my favorite add to the game in years. Thank you all for watching, please leave a like and subscribe because it helps me a lot and enjoy a tour of the Swan Village with the shaders. See you soon! If you wanna know how I do it, if you search for a new cool idea, here she is, here she is, Min my MC, Min my MC, the best place to be, building brick by brick, with a little steep mountain high or never deep, all you villagers and pillagers, she's gonna show the craft, to the secrets of Minecraft, assembling, creating, and waiting for the new update. Don't be a creeper, if you like what you see, raise your hands high and thumbs up for me, my